Welcome back to Tech by Pipe. Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. We unboxed this laptop a couple weeks ago and posted that video, but now we've done some benchmarking and we've taken a look at the different uh, features of this laptop and we want to share those with you now. Um, this is not a gaming laptop and so and it's not really geared for gamers, but we did do some gaming on this particular unit and some uh, AAA games, as a matter of fact, and got some pretty surprising results. Anyway, um, we did that. We took a look at the different modes this laptop can go into, uh, the uh, stage mode and the uh, tablet mode. And then we also took a look at um, video editing on this laptop. So anyway, we got a lot to go over. I want to quickly review the specs of this laptop. It's a 14 4 inch touch display, 2400 by 1600, 120 hertz with a 3.2 aspect ratio, has uh, 32 gigs of LPDDR4 memory, has a quad core Intel 11 gen Intel Core H35 i7 11370H processor has a one terabyte SSD, which is removable. And uh, I've seen people try to get into this laptop uh, to try to, to, to look at the internals. And I would probably advise not to do that. I've seen some uh, bottom plates be bent, screws be stripped. Um, it's just not a really easy uh, unit to get into. So anyway, uh, just fair warning. Uh, we have the battery capacity is a 58 watts, and then we have the camera, which is a 2MP front-facing camera, 1080p FHD video, and then we have the Wi-Fi 6 card. It comes with quad speakers powered by Dolby Atmos. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and go over uh, all the uh, benchmarking that we've done, and then uh, I'll have some final thoughts at the end. Let's get into it. This is the built-in 1080p camera and mic. Uh, I've done a number of tests now and it sounds and looks pretty good. There's no lag um, and it, I do look just a tad bit flushed out but I think it's just because of the windows open over here, the window shade. If I was to type you can hear it a little bit. The microphone picks it up pretty well. And not only that, though, the microphone's pretty clear. My voice is pretty clear. So um, is it the best? No, but it's pretty darn good. We're going to test out the speakers on this laptop using one of my older videos. And the speakers are on high. Wow, that's really loud. Those speakers are really, really good. So uh, that is definitely a thumbs up for me. We did some testing on the screen with our Spider X Pro and we got 82% of Adobe RGB, 86% of P3, and 100% of sRGB. That's great. We performed some uh, synthetic benchmarking using 3D Mark and we ran Time Spy. Uh, Night Raid, and this is a benchmarking um, tool that benchmarks the combination of the integrated graphics, the dedicated graphics, and the CPU. And then we did a benchmark around the CPU profile, and then a storage benchmark. Our time spy score, graphic score, was 4,406. CPU score was 5,028. And then our online comparison, our score was just a little bit below average with 4,489. So we ran Night Raid as well. And this benchmarking does a combination of the dedicated graphics, in this case it's an RTX 3050 Ti, the integrated graphics, and then the CPU as well. Our graphics score was 3,771. CPU score was 8,719. And then our overall score was 23,599. And compared to online, it was below the average, and the average was 26,638. Here is the CPU profile scores, and uh, you can see up here max threads, 16 threads, 8 threads, that's 3,300. 
just in case you can't see all of that. And then four threads is 2,756. That's kind of covered here uh, with this piece of information. And then this is uh, one thread right here at 826. The rest of it you can probably read. So our storage benchmarking score overall was 2,155, but you can look down here where the average test for load Battlefield 5, the load for Call of Duty Black Ops, and the load for Overwatch, overwatch the bandwidth and the average access time i did if you see down here look up this model number uh online just to see what the actual uh solid state drive uh, what the manufacturer was and read write speeds and whatnot and uh, i came up with this manufacturer's sk hynix i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that correctly but then once i scrolled down uh, it came out to uh, this model number right here, PC711. If I scroll up, this is the capacity, 256 gigabyte to one terabyte. We got the one terabyte. And then these are the actual uh, read-write um, speeds and power consumption. And it's a PCIe Gen 3 times 4. Okay. We ran some synthetic benchmarking using Geekbench 5 and our single core score came out to 1330 and our multi-core score came out to 5239 and I'm just going to scroll down a little bit so you can get some of these um, performance scores in more detail. Here's our single core performance scores. And then our multi Core performance scores and you can slow this video down to get these numbers if you'd like and here's our open CL score on Geekbench 5 and I'll just scroll down again see some of this performance scores in more detail another synthetic benchmarking tool we used was Cinebench R23 and our CPU multi-core score was 5,408 and our CPU single core score was 1,310 points. Okay, I want to talk about the different modes that this laptop has and right now it's in laptop mode. Works like a regular laptop. This has Windows 11. Um, but if I move the screen out to where it passes the keyboard, this is called a staged mode, and in staged mode I can watch um, movies, videos, YouTube, Netflix, I can play games with like an Xbox controller. Um, so, and to be honest with you, you could also do some drawing with the pencil that you'd get from Microsoft, um, but I have a really hard time with this because I could sit here and do stuff, but it still pushes on the actual screen a little bit. And I don't know, I just, I find that very uncomfortable. So instead of using the stage mode for drawing, I would put it in a tablet mode. And like I said before, I got the Microsoft Pencil. Let's take a look at that real quick. Underneath here, where this ledge is in front of the laptop is where you put the actual Microsoft Pencil. And there is a magnetic strip that keeps it in place. It also charges the pencil, but that is really, really strong and it keeps it right in place. So no chance of, well, uh, very little chance of it coming off there. Okay, let's go into tablet mode now. Okay, we're in a whiteboard here where we're gonna test out the pencil and we're gonna use that like blue and we're gonna do tech by pike and it's pretty smooth writing actually I can use the eraser to erase that and you can kind of see that there is a delay when you use broad strokes when erasing now if I go back I'm gonna hit that again I'm gonna go with the black color again tech by Pike. A really neat feature with this pencil is you can just turn around like a regular pencil and just erase like that there, which I think is pretty cool. I'm not much of a drawer, but um, 
I think that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, and I might do another video just around the pencil and the whiteboard and all the different features that you have with that. But I just wanted to show it off real quick. I think it's kind of cool. So there you go. Before we start testing our gameplay and our in-game benchmarking, we want to make sure that the laptop is optimized for gameplay. And so you go into system and then the display settings and you can go down to graphics. And that will actually take you to a list of your games that you already have installed. And you just want to make sure that you click on the game and hit options and you can let the windows decide power saving and high performance. We want high performance for this particular test and we want to do that for all our games here. So uh, just make note of that. Whoops, we want to make sure that is high performance. Okay, let's uh, start our benchmarking. So this Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio is not really a gaming laptop, but we did happen to play a number of our favorite games. And we were getting pretty good frames per second on medium settings on some of the games that we did play because uh, they are some of them are resource hogs. And I wanted to make sure that there was a level playing field. So medium settings, 80 to 90 FPS for Star Wars Battlefront 2, which actually was slightly surprising. 55 to 60 frames per second FPS for Final Fantasy 14. We were getting 38 to 45 FPS on average on medium settings for God of War. And then for Cyberpunk 2077, we were getting 24 to 35 FPS on average. And, and that is uh, borderline playable. So just keep that in mind. So since we did uh, get some good decent FPS scores on games we like to play on medium settings. We decided to get uh, some FPS scores on some previous games we like to benchmark. They have these internal benchmarking tools. And these games were set on ultra settings. And we started with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where we were getting a maximum of 51 FPS, an average of 34, and a minimum of 24 FPS. F1 2020, we were getting a maximum of 145 FPS, average 119, and minimum of 92. Red Dead Redemption, we were getting a max of 77 FPS, average 32, and minimum of 19 FPS. And then Horizon Zero Dawn, we were getting 104 FPS max, average of 51, and a minimum of 20 FPS. So some of these games very playable on ultra settings on this laptop. We're running the Horizon Zero Dawn benchmarking, and right now the fans are putting out about 50 to 51 decibels. And we're going to go ahead and check the temperature of the keyboard. Right below the screen there is the hottest, around 37 to a little over 38 degrees Celsius. The trackpad is around mid-20s. And the palm rests are getting pretty warm, around 31 to 30 Celsius. So I mocked up a video here using my CyberLink PowerDirector video editing software on this laptop and um, I, I wasn't disappointed. It, it performed exactly how I thought it was going to perform. Um, I typically use my Razorblade i9 laptop with the RTX 3080 um, for my everyday uh, video editing. And then I have also a MacBook Pro M1 Mac 16 inch laptop that I also use and obviously those laptops are going to be a lot faster than this one but this laptop did get the job done and yes it was slower but uh, that's okay um, for uh, what I wanted it to do it performed uh, just fine. The Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio uh, there's some things about this unit that I like and some things that I don't. I'm going to talk about the things that I don't like first and I do have some concerns around this hinge that holds the screen uh, to the laptop and makes it 
possible for it to go into the three modes, laptop mode, stage mode for content viewing, and then the tablet mode. I have a sneaky suspicion, and this is just my opinion, that after some time, let's say six months to a year, this hinge will get pretty worn and maybe not function as well as it should. Also, when I was moving it from stage mode to the laptop mode again, I did notice that if you don't have it all the way up or all the way back, there tends to be some scraping along the actual keyboard here, the chassis and the keyboard, and then the bottom of the actual tablet. So something to be aware of. Another thing about this laptop is that it's really hard to get into it and take a look at the internals. Um, you can go out to the Microsoft website and check it out yourself. They have a video that kind of talks about what's inside and shows you the internals of this laptop. I didn't want to risk uh, trying to break into it. Um, I've seen numerous videos where other people have tried and have either bent the bottom plate or damaged the laptop in some way and I just didn't want to risk it. So. Anyway, uh, go out to the website and you'll, you can check it out. Um, another thing about this laptop is the fact that it, we got it for about $2,700 out on the Best Buy website, and that's without tax. And it's a little bit of a premium uh, price for a laptop like this, in my opinion. But if you look at it this way, if you are in the market for a laptop and you need a new tablet to go with it, it might be worth looking into an all-in-one instead of two separate devices uh, to carry around with you. So uh, there is that. Um, this laptop's performance was pretty decent. I mean, uh, productivity tasks handles with no problem. Video editing, um, it, I was able to do it. Uh, without a problem. It was just slower than what I'm typically used to. I have, like I said, a MacBook Pro M1 Max that is so much faster than this. And then I have my Razer Blade 17 with the i9 and the RTX 3080 and that completely smokes this machine. Uh, but that's okay. It did what I needed it to do. And so uh, that, that that's good in my opinion. I also, um, I was able to do some gaming on this laptop. And I didn't get fantastic frame rates, but I did get playable frame rates, you know, between 55 to 65 FPS on some AAA games, medium settings. It, it was pretty decent. So I have to give them that. The screen was fantastic, 120 hertz, and uh, very, very vivid colors. So I recommend this laptop for somebody who needs a, a laptop and a tablet and it, don't want to carry two devices. It's a very niche market, but um, you know it, it's a good device. And uh, for twenty-seven hundred dollars and, and one device, uh, it it might be a good deal. Uh, that's up for you to decide. Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more tech videos from Tech by Pike. Hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it. it. Helps the channel, and not only that, it gives us an opportunity to bring more tech videos to you. And for that. We appreciate it. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.